Hello everybody, so up till now we have looked at Newton's first three laws. But Newton, good old Newton, he didn't stop there. He went on to develop Newton's law of gravity. And so what Newton's law of gravity tells us is that every single object that you can see has a force of attraction to all other objects around it. So for example, this Super Mario toy over here is being attracted to the Batman and the Batman is being attracted to the Super Mario. So then Kevin, why aren't they moving towards each other? Good question. That is because the force is so small that we don't see anything. The force gets bigger when you make the objects bigger. And then just one more, this little, I think it's like a little elephant and this teddy bear, they are attracted to each other. There is a force that is trying to push them towards each other, but then Kevin, why are they not moving? Good question again. It's because they have such a low mass that you don't see anything happening. So it's time that we crank things up a little bit. So here we've got two people skydiving. Now this is awesome. This is something that I would love to do one day. Maybe some of you watching this have done skydiving before. That is cool. So have a look at this. You've got to think of it like this. Let's imagine that this is, let me do that in a different color. This is one object. Now what's the other object? Well, it's the earth. Okay, so let's say the earth does that. Okay, so there's planet earth. Now the object or earth is extremely heavy. And so notice what it's doing. It's attracting, remember we said that any objects attract each other. So here we've got this huge planet Earth, and then we've got this little speck, which is the two people. And look at this, the two objects do have mass, and so they are attracting each other. But then Kevin, why do we as people move towards the Earth and not the other way around? It's just got to do with the mass. So the Earth is attracting the people, and with Newton's third law, we can also say that the people are attracting the Earth. And that force is the same on both objects. But Kevin, that's crazy. If the forces are the same on both objects, how can it only be that the people are moving? Guys, it's got to do with the mass of the Earth. Once again, when a fly hits the windshield of a car, the force on the fly and the windshield is the same. Newton's third law tells us that. But if one of the objects has a very, very, very large mass, it will not move, or it will move very lightly. So what you need to take away so far from this lesson is that any two objects on the Earth that have mass will always attract each other. However, if one of the objects is extremely big, then you won't see it moving. And if both objects are very small, you're not going to see them moving either. So Kevin, that's quite boring because this theory, like we don't see anything happening. Yes, guys, I do understand that. But you need one of the objects to be very heavy and then you start seeing it happen. So like, a, like people being attracted to a planet, that works nicely. Why? Because the planet is extremely heavy. So here's an awesome photo of, of Earth and the Moon. So Kevin, the Earth and the Moon, now they are very, very heavy. Why are they not rushing towards each other? Because you said that when the masses are very big, then the objects are attracted to each other. Okay, yes, that is true. But that's not the only thing we have to look at. We also have to look at the distance. Now, if the distance is extremely far, then that force becomes very small. If the distance is very close, then the force of attraction is very big. So there are two things we need to look at. We need to know the mass of the objects, and we also need to know the distance between them. If the mass is very big, then the force is very big. If the distance is big, then the force is low. And so Newton developed a formula, and this formula will be given to you in the formula sheet, and it goes like this. The force of gravitational acceleration is equal to, now don't worry about this capital G for now, what you do is you take the mass of the first object and you multiply it with the mass of the second object, and you divide that by the distance between the two centers of the object, and then you square that value. Mass will be in kilograms, this mass will be in kilograms, this R must be in meters. Now G is a constant. It's a value that you'll get on your 
formula sheet and it has a value of 6.67 times 10 to the minus 11. This is an extremely small number. Now things are going to start making sense. If this number over here is already very small, then it's going to cause the force of attraction between objects to be very small unless the mass of the objects can be really, really big so that it can override this very small number. Or if the distance between the objects is extremely small, then when you divide by a small number, you can make f relatively big. And so this only works really nicely when we have planets because planets are large enough and heavy enough to override this large number. But when you have a number like 6.67 times 10 to the minus 11 and you've got a teddy bear in your room which weighs 1 kilogram and let's say you weigh 55 kilograms, if you type that in on the calculator, guys, that is such a small number. This, this teddy bear and this person, they're not going to change this at all. Because 6.67 times 10 to the minus 11 is like 0 0.000000. It's got a whole lot of zeros. And then finally, 667. So it's a very small number. But what you need to take away from this lesson is that all objects, no matter how big they are, do attract each other. And to work out the force of attraction, we use this formula over here, where G is a constant. M1 and M2 is the mass in kilograms. And R is the distance between their centers in meters. Thank you for watching.